Hey folks, it's a man once again, and welcome back to another review of a film that I found. Well, it was at a pawn shop a while ago, and it had like six movies for ten dollars, and this was pretty much free. The Boy. I had one or two people ask about this, I think because they knew I'd hate it. Sadly, this made money for some reason in 2016. It's a PG-13 film that I should have known because it's directed by the guy who did The Devil Inside My Ass. And when you have a devil inside your ass, it's not going to be a good thing. It's going to be a bad thing. Because it's going to have bad decisions, it's going to have bad problems, and it's going to have bad movies being made. So, get the devil out of your ass, and maybe the director gets his head out of his ass. This is the boy... Boy toy, the boy toy Shawn Michaels, whatever. The boy needs a spanking. I don't know what. A woman goes to a house in the middle of nowhere, this woman here. And this old couple wants her to be a nanny for their kid. Then she finds out that the kid is actually this. Of course, she's weirded out, but she takes the money because, hey, f easy money. The old couple leave. Uh, the only person she meets is a guy who delivers groceries, which is this guy. And they have a little bit of fall in love, of course. And even their first meeting was weird because the guy is trying to be smooth. But he goes, I can read your chewing gum. And I'm like, isn't it fucking weird to ask someone you just met to touch their fucking chewed chewing gum? Like literally, the woman's chewing gum. He's like, I can read your chewing gum. And gets the fucking chewing gum. He's like, okay, right then I would be like, okay, I'm leaving. No one is taking chewing gum from my mouth and touching it. Okay. It's been fucking weird. And like the first hour is just... She'll hear noises. Oh, the doll moved. Oh, well. Like two fucking shitty jump scare dream sequences. If you watch the trailer, there's a scene where, actually this shot here, she's at the painting and an arm comes through. That's one jump stare dream sequence, nightmare sequence. The other one, she's watching the doll, the doll twists. Another jump stare dream sequence. The two actors are doing what they can. I'm not going to blame the actor and actress. I'm not going to blame Laura Cohen or Rupert Evans. It's more the writing and directing writer Stacy Minear. Can you get near to talent? Because this doesn't show any of it. William Brent Bell. Do you need to ring any fucking bells? You did the devil inside my ass, which hurts, and you did this. You cannot direct horror movies. You cannot direct suspenseful movies. You cannot direct smart movies. Uh, I'll give this above the devil inside my ass, because at least this has an ending. Unlike the devil inside my asshole. And stinks. Just like, this fucking stinks. Hell, the fucking movie should be called Bitch Leave, or Leave Bitch, or Leave Bitch Leave. And no, that's not because of the actress, it's because of the character. And the character is not being bitchy, it's just they're written, they're writing her to be so fucking stupid, because she doesn't fucking leave when she fucking can. The doll is moving. Uh huh? Did it move? You hear noises. There's a scene where you're taking a shower, your shit gets taken, you go out, one of those things in the ceiling that when you pull down, a ladder comes down, that is down. 
and you're like, hello? Um, you're supposed to be alone in the middle of nowhere. You're in a towel. It's the middle of the night. Fucking leaves! The fucking wind didn't come in, sneak down your fucking thing, man. Even if the movie tries to tell me so, it's bullshit. Fucking leave. So many times I'm like, fucking leave. Then she goes up the fucking attic. Then she gets locked in there. Then she falls and knocks herself out. Then it's morning and it opens. And I'm like, she still doesn't leave. She calls the guy, oh, one mystery solved. Hey, the I did just this thing and the ladder came down. Really? Fucking really? You acting as if I sneeze, a fucking ladder's gonna come down from the goddamn ceiling. And, then, oh yeah, you got locked in there and then automatically you got unlocked? How about you fucking leave? I didn't... Leave, bitch, or bitch, leave, or leave, bitch, leave. That's the fucking alternate title of this goddamn movie. They're playing pool. Wake up. The doll's on the bed with the rules. Once again, this doll is moving. There's no one else in the house. Fucking leave. But she goes to her room and locks it in her room. She runs into her room and locks it because she's scared. Why are you... There's this thing called a door that leads to the outside. You go out it, then you leave. Not go into your fucking room and lock the door in your room. She's hearing the voice of a little boy, and this will let leave the fucking mansion. She's left sandwiches. She fucking takes it and doesn't leave. <laughs> yes, the 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 boy leaves her a sandwich. How nice of him. Now I get the idea that it's not doing anything that malicious so far. I get the idea that you have this little subplot where he, she had this asshole boyfriend, she was pregnant, the guy beat her up, she lost her baby. See, that little plays into it. I get the fact that, hey, someone sees paranormal and they're not doing anything malicious, you would be intrigued and excited, like Joe Beth Williams in Poltergeist, where you had, you know, Carol Ann and then moved across the floor. I could get that. Hell, I, I would be excited by a paranormal event. I've never seen one. I, I would be excited. But the writing directing does not... does not build that up in any amount of an interesting or intriguing or suspenseful or believable way. It's not like you're watching the boy and you're thinking it's going to be nice spirits. You're not watching the boy and being scared or anything of that nature. So then you had to just go and fucking leave. And you're just making the lead character be an idiot and a moron. The asshole boyfriend comes over and everything I fucking said is the first hour of this movie. I didn't I didn't miss anything. Oh, except the old people when they left, they went somewhere and they drowned themselves. And then they sent a letter saying, We we can't take care of you anymore, boy. This girl's gonna do it. And at this point the movie's making you think it is a ghost, it is a spirit that inhabits the doll. And also the the grocery guy I didn't want to tell you this at the beginning, but uh this little girl went and visited the kid on his eighth birthday or before that and uh, she disappeared and then she was found dead and then there was a fire hmm. when the asshole boyfriend comes in she even asked 
the boy, please help me, please, please help me. And the boy tries, leaves a bloody message from, I think, rats or something. They get out, the boyfriend is ready to beat up on the girl and fuck with the grocery guy. The the asshole boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, should say, destroys the doll. And this is the twist. And as soon as I'm like, oh, now I know what the fucking twist was because I had heard about it before. I've never seen the film, but from what I understand, it's Bad Ronald. Or remind me of elements of the Black Christmas remake. And well, in other fucking movies. I mean, the boy's grown up and is a man who has his mask, who lives in the walls as if it's the people of the fucking stairs. People under the stairs. People under the fucking stairs. Much better movie than this. Much better movie. And he goes up and stabs the asshole in the neck and the other people are screaming. I'm like, why are you screaming? And I'm like, yeah, kill that motherfucker. You should be happy. What the fuck do you expect? You should be happy. This asshole killed your baby, was ready to beat the fuck out of you. Complete other dick. You asked for help. And you know what? If the movie took this turn, which some people may not like, but if the boy, this grown man, before I get that, it's a twist, so you're like, come on. Come on. You know, the first hour you're building up this, this ghost possessed thing. And on the one hand, I'm like, you get so tired of the ghost possession shit that you're like, oh, cool, they're doing something not different, but not just another ghost exorcism possession movie. But it's just one of those twists that you're like, Come on. Come on. Where the f fuck did this guy eat? This The first week this lady was a nanny, she would leave food, and then whenever they eat, she'd throw in the garbage. What the fuck does this guy eat? Eat rats? Is that what he ate? What was he really eating? Where the fuck does he take his shit? How the fuck does he literally sound like a little boy? Does he have one of those fucking things, like, scream? Little voice things? And it's like, come on. Come on. But what I was saying before, if you... If you wanted to do that and really be different... Where... It becomes a drama. I, I, I know, but bear with me. The boy doesn't attack these two. And he's just someone that to feel sorry for. And he's been living like this. And maybe he was a boy. It was an accident that got the little girl killed. And he felt guilty and he never wanted to leave. And some other led to the fire, or maybe the maybe the little boy admitted to the parents, and the parents like, we don't want our kid locked away, so let's pretend you died in a fire. And the kid didn't have much of a choice, so it makes us feel sorry for the kid. And then or maybe like it's a fight between this and the asshole boyfriend, and he hasn't stabbed him yet, and they both die. But the, the boy does a good thing. You feel sorry for the boy. At least that would be more different, interesting, unique. Instead, it just turns to another typical wannabe PG-13 slasher film where this guy in a mask is trying to kill these two people. Uh, 
it all of a sudden has superhuman strength, busting through walls, all of a sudden like the grocery guy attacks the the villain and the girl does nothing and leaves even after the killer says if you leave I'll kill him she leaves gets pretty far away and then it's like okay eventually goes back tries to fuck with his head put him to sleep doesn't work stabs him of course, he's not really dead, just we have a sequel bait ending. I don't know why we have a sequel bait ending, because if you, even if you wanted to make a sequel, you already pulled your trick card. People already know what the twist is. Other than just be another typical slasher, uh, new people live go in the house and they get stopped one by one by the boy. Maybe that's what they were hoping for their sequel bait ending. So... If you really went for, if you want to have the twist and really go for with something unique and different, and turn more into a psychological drama, which I know is weird coming from me, but like I thought that that would be, I knew that's not what was going to happen here. But I'm just saying, I think that would make a more intriguing movie. Here, it just becomes a cheap shot, and I don't like cheap shots. As man would say, uh, the boy is just a butt fuck. It just the two actors do the best they can, but they're hampered by a shitty script. Very boring pace. Not much happening. Not suspenseful. Two cheap ass jump nightmare sequences. A twist that is grown worthy, and I can guarantee you a lot of people are like, come on, what? It's fucking, again, I've never seen the film, but I've heard of, like, Bad Ronald and shit. Come on, really? Really? That's what you're doing? Really? Okay. I mean, is that a downbeat ending? <laughs> like a lot of horror films are, just the two leave. Which I'm like, why didn't she fucking do that at the beginning? Because there'd be no movie. But, you know, I don't get the sequel band ending. And it's like, of course he gets stabbed, but he's still alive. It's more rare for them to stay dead, honestly. I mean, that's the thing, like, what do you expect from the director of The Devil Inside? My ass. And then being PG-13, so you can't really get much of a visceral reaction. And <sighs> I don't know what else to say about the boy. The score, I don't remember anything about. There's not much other actors in the movie. Well, truthfully, you only see these two, the two old couple, and the asshole boyfriend. So, yeah, that's really... Well, and the killer. You know, the boy, as you find out. So, that's what, six people. Body count one, the asshole. So, it's not a body count movie. I guess, technically, the two parents who drowned themselves. <laughs> uh, it's not scary. It's not creepy. It makes, again, the lead character look fucking dumb. Like, this movie could end in ten minutes. I don't know what else to say. But anyway... Why, why do I have the fucking Shawn Michaels theme song in my fucking head? He just a sexy boy, sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy, boy toy. Just a sexy boy, sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy, boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy, sexy boy. I'm not your fun toy, toy. I'm not your fun toy, fun toy.